Hello, uh, I'm Teacher Oakley. Welcome to Verbling. And once again, uh, here on Verbling, it's time for Famous Quotes class. Today, I hope that you will indulge me a little bit. Um, frankly, got a degree in communications largely based on the fact that I really was inspired by a group of journalists that had a sharp, satirical, biting form of journalism. And so uh, this guy that we're looking at today, P.J. O'Rourke, not really all that famous, but a personal favorite. So I hope you will indulge me today a little bit uh, as I share some quotes from my good friend, P.J. Uh, Hello, uh, Matthew. Welcome to the class. Hey, How teacher Oakley. Oh, hey. hey, Matt. <laughs> How are you? Yeah. I'm doing great. How are you? Uh, How, are you? Uh, How are you? How are you? I'm yeah. doing fine. Doing okay. Thank you. I okay. I actually ate breakfast today. You know what I had for breakfast today? What? Share with us. Huge fat steak for breakfast. I felt That's like. Such an American. That's unhealthy. Your uh, your know. body hurts after that. I, I know. I felt so so good. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, you should you should eat only only like um, uh, boiled uh, food. Not. Uh, I don't food. care. I don't <laughs> care. I really don't. I I have no aspiration to live forever. I could care less. Okay. Anyway, it made me feel great. Uh, anyway, good to see you in class. Hey, welcome. Hey, uh, Matt, do you have any idea? You pro you guys probably don't. Have you ever heard of this guy, P.J. O'Rourke? No, never. I uh, have uh, no clue, because, no idea, because um, I don't know, is he an actor or is he in, like... Okay, all right. Well, we'll get to him. Uh, we'll, we'll get to that info. Okay. All right, let me also welcome Heidi again. Hello, Heidi. Hello. Whoa, somebody's got a lot of noise there. Uh, Zreno, wow, try to think. Zrenoe? Zrenoe? Hello? Uh, he's using yeah. button screen. Yeah, it sounds like, sounds like he's using that. Hi, it's, you've got a lot of background noise. Sounds like you're using a vacuum cleaner to clean, clean your microphone. <laughs> so, if you wouldn't mind muting your microphone, please. Uh, when you're not talking, Can you please mute your microphone. I don't think for that. Sorry, could you mute your microphone, please? When you're. Would you mind? Your no, microphone is broken. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I know that. We all know that. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, just uh, on the top of the screen, here in Verbling, you see there's some icons up here on the top of the screen. Just click the mute microphone button when you're not talking. <laughs> okay? What is Otherwise, your problem with my uh, microphone? It's 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 very loud. I can't conduct the class with. He's busy. Okay. Uh, never mind. I'll just have to mute you myself. <laughs> right. Fine. <laughs> Hello, Alexander. Hello. Hello. Uh, uh, how are you doing today? Uh, very good, thank you. Okay. How are you? Uh, I'm I'm good. Do you have any idea who uh, P. J. O'Rourke is? No, uh, don't know who he is. Okay, I, uh, Heidi, and I I, did, I didn't have a chance to ask you. Have you ever heard of this guy? I'm sorry, I don't know about him. 
All right. I'm not surprised. You, you guys probably wouldn't. Um, most probably, most Americans wouldn't even know this guy. Um, hello, Alebeck. Welcome to the class. What kind of film? Yes. Hello. Hello again. Hi. Hi again. Uh, Heidi, what was your, your question? What kind of film he is? Okay. Uh, he is... What he's what he's known for, and why I personally like him is because he is an American political satirist. He writes satire. He is quite possibly the most sarcastic man in, alive. <laughs> he's extremely cynical and sarcastic, and he uh, writes about. American and uh, world society, world culture, and politics, and sometimes uh, other areas, economics, religion, and he's uh, he's pretty severe in his uh, very cynical, sarcastic views. He's amusing to re to read. He writes for a number of pretty. Uh, pretty good, uh, well, like uh, the Atlantic Monthly, uh, American Spectator, uh, he's on national public radio in the United States a lot. He writes He writes a lot, you'll see his writing in National Lampoon Magazine, in Rolling Stone Magazine. He was a writer for Rolling Stone Magazine for many, many years, which is where I have read a lot of his work. And also Playboy. <laughs> uh, he has been on 60 Minutes. He is sometimes on television news programs to give his views because he he frequently has views maybe contrary, almost always contrary to uh, people in the government. And, <laughs> and, he, and he doesn't he doesn't pussyfoot around. He's not delicate. He is by no means is he any kind of a. <laughs> he's not very diplomatic. He's Sorry, very okay. what's the uh, pussyfoot around? What did pussyfoot you say? around. Okay, that's a good one. Let me <laughs> let me write that. And, yeah, that's a that's a. <laughs> uh, what I don't know is it one word or two words. I, it's one word. Pussyfoot. Pussyfoot around. So he, if you pussyfoot around like a cat, meow, um, you walk very delicately and carefully. So if you pussyfoot around, you're being very careful not to step on other people's feelings or opinions, emotions. He doesn't pussyfoot around. If you don't like what he's saying, well, the heck with you. Um, we often use this phrase in a negative way. He doesn't pussyfoot ar around. And by the way, pussyfoot around. It's, I guess it's, I guess it's a phrasal verb. I hadn't really thought about it, but I, I, pussyfoot around, I guess, would be a phrasal verb. Anyway, interesting one. Usually used in the negative. Anyway, this guy, he doesn't pussyfoot around. He doesn't care who's, who he, who he pisses off. Frankly, he doesn't really care, and I admire that style. I like it a lot. He, yeah. Anyway, uh, that's who he is. That's what he does, and he is very, very critical of American society, American consumerism, American government, and uh, but on the other hand, he just does. He doesn't just complain. He's not a Michael Moore. He doesn't just say how bad things are. Do you guys know who Michael Moore is? Yeah, he's a very famous um, uh, d director, film director. He made, he made a movie in uh, Columbine. Yeah, Bowling for Columbine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Um, and another, uh, in some other movies. And, and it's in the same vein, but to be quite frank with you, Michael Moore comes across as being a little bit whiny. And why do the government... Yeah. He's a little bit annoying. 
So is PJ O'Rourke, but PJ O'Rourke is just funnier. He's better at it. <laughs> he makes it more funny. Actually, uh, I liked uh, uh, movie My Michael Moore's movie. I watched, I think, yeah. two movies. First is about 9/11, like uh, about what happened in uh, the United mm -hmm. States in 2001. And second one about uh, oh, economical right. crisis from 2008, oh, about De Detroit, Michigan, things like that. So Flint, I think Flint, Michigan. Yeah, yeah. So he. I think uh, he's like a very constru constructive criticism. Or what do you say? Con uh, right, constructive criticism. He's a yeah. constructive. So I guess he is a constructive critic yeah, of American yeah. American society and the political system. Okay, well, P. J. O'Rourke is uh, Michael Moore. His his um, his media choice is film. Uh, P. J. O'Rourke, pretty much the same thing, except he's a journalist. He, you don't see P.G. O'Rourke in films, although P.G. O'Rourke has written screenwriter. He has written some films, comedy, or uh, I think uh, collaborated with writing some films would be more accurate. He's helped to write some comedy films. Anyway, uh, similar. Okay, you know Michael Moore, then you got the idea of where uh, where. P.J. O'Rourke is coming from. It's kind of the same thing. Very no holds barred. Uh, but uh, anyway, let's take a look at what he has to say and uh, his style. We, we can talk about his style. We can talk about what he's saying. Um, okay. The first quote is very lighthearted, very simple, just kind of funny in my opinion. Um, all right, Matt, can you read the first quote here? Um, be because of their size, parents might be difficult to discipline properly. Mm -hmm. Like, because they are uh, big, like parents, might be difficult to discipline properly. Now, mm. I, okay, this may seem what? like a very lighthearted, simple thing, but do you think he's trying to say something deeper? Mm, because of their size, parents may be difficult to discipline properly. Well, like uh, with children, so basically he's saying that uh, children are easy, is, uh, are easy to discipline because they're smaller. Okay. <laughs> but well, why do parents need discipline? I don't know. Uh, Heidi, what do you think? Um. Okay. Uh, um, sometimes the children are very good. Uh, we call it. Uh, um. Uh, what's it? What's more bad? I I don't know that na name. Uh, give give bus. Uh, Falcon like that. So even though normal parent uh, give bus very e excellent children. So the children are the very good, good ability or capacity. But if uh, uh, the parents force the um, kind of discipline very strongly, it uh, um, waste their ability. Okay. Interesting message. All right, possibly. Okay. I well, it's very open to interpretation here. That well, no, that's very interesting, actually. Uh, Alexander, do you think PJ is trying to say something more than just being a smart aleck? Mm. <clears throat> I don't quite understand uh, what does it mean. This this sentence actually. Is uh, it's about uh, parents who. who Difficult to discipline their children properly, or uh, I, I don't know. That's what that's what Heidi seems to think it has to do with. Uh, I didn't see that, but that doesn't mean she's wrong. Actually, we can. It's a quote, so we can interpret it any way we want to. Um, and that's kind of the kind of the point is that. Uh, 
I don't know. How do you see it? That's what I'm asking you. There is no wrong answer here, really. Uh, I'll tell you, you know, the way I see it, I think it's a little bit funny because maybe he's inferring that parents sometimes are wrong and sometimes children or young people are right. Sometimes it's not the children that need the discipline. But that's an inference. Whatever he's saying, other than the what he's, you know, other than the obvious concrete saying, whatever it is, it, it's inferred. So I don't know. What what do you can you do? You infer anything from this? Maybe you don't. That's, that's okay too. <laughs> I would uh, maybe understand if I uh, I don't understand the uh, translation of the literal translation. If I knew the literal translation, I maybe oh, okay. I would understand it. Well, I'm because quite, they're uh, get it. because of their size as opposed to children. I, I, because of their because they're big, it's difficult to discipline. You discipline children normally. We don't ever, never does the concept of disciplining parents uh, is ne never really talked about. You discipline children. You whatever. Uh, you send them to the room, or you don't allow them to watch any more television because they do something wrong. You punish them. You discipline them like that. So he's saying it's it's difficult to punish the parents, which in fact we do. That's that's why we have laws. <laughs> that's that's what laws do. Their laws discipline adults, or supposedly. Ah, so it's uh, about uh, that uh, difficult to discipline uh, parents because they yeah. are grown. Ah, yeah, because that's it. That's, uh, because they are grown. That's right. Yes, right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now you not got it. the it's a literal size. He meant he meant that uh, the uh, it's hard to change uh, grown up people because they think they are um, grow uh, grow. They already know everything, everything, and uh, hard to change them. Okay. With children, it's easier. All right, all right. Uh, let me quickly welcome Nader. Hey, hello, Nader. Hello, afternoon. Good, good afternoon. It is afternoon, isn't it? Where did the morning go? Okay. Um, <laughs> afternoon where I am. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, okay, all right. Let's let's. I, I want to move on. Let's debate some more of his stuff here. Uh, Alabek, can you read this next quote for me, please? Okay. okay. Anyway, no drug, not even alcohol, causes the fundamental ills of society. If we are, we, we are looking for the source of our troubles, we shouldn't test, test people for drugs. We should test them for stupidity, ignorance, greed, and love of power. Well, there's a suggestion. <laughs> what do you think of that suggestion? <laughs> what do you think of that? Okay. Anyway, no. hmm. uh, maybe he's just uh, he's thinking about uh, the the harm of the society, which yeah. Uh, which always we, we we always mentioned only the um, uh, some you know uh, a, a visible harm as a drug or alcohol or ah. uh, or something else. But he mentioned about what what about the the others uh, harms so, which is uh, relates of from our our stupidity or when we do some ignorance of the knowledge or. Uh, Greed and love. Maybe he's dis discussing about some feelings more than about the uh -huh. the, d the direct causes of the of the alcohol or drugs, like right. something like that. Okay, you're you're saying it without saying it, but you're really really close. So I'm going to give you the vocabulary word. What you're saying is that use of alcohol or drugs is a symptom 
of the ills of society. It's not the cause. Is basically okay. what you're saying, and I, I, well, I agree. I think, I think that is what he's saying. But uh, let's see, um, Nate Air, what do you think of this <laughs> little suggestion here? Yes, I, I agree. I agree with that. <laughs> it seems that uh, in, innate uh, characters are the sources of all troubles, mm. not right. something. Uh, yes, not uh, external forces or something. You take, or uh, you don't abuse uh, alcohol. You become bad. Something in you, like stupidity, ah. ignorance. And then you, you then you turn to alcohol. It's interesting that you. I really am interested that you use the word innate. Yes. Very interesting. Hmm. Well, there's okay. Well, there's an endless discussion involved in that. Um, Nature versus nurture is it is it an innate suggest to me Nate Air that you're saying that it's biological, it's hereditary, it's genetic, it's part of our code. Um, no, but I don't mean that you are born with the greed and love okay. of power. But it's something inside you that causes your trouble. Okay. Don't blame right. the others or don't blame the society. Don't say that because of alcohol I lost my life or because of uh, my father left the family I lost my life. Uh huh. Okay. Uh, okay. It's, it's interesting. Innate has a, a couple meanings inborn or natural, as I suggested, or in, speaking in a philosophical way, Nate Eric, thank you. Clarified, it means it originating in the mind. Um, coming from the mind, a essential part of the mind, which is the meaning that Nidar, thank you, uh, clarified. Okay. Uh, very good. Um, Matt, what do you think of this quote? Um, kind of the same. What you said that uh, um, it's uh, like a result like alcohol, drugs, but mm. uh, what right. he mentioned, like stupidity, ignorance, greed, love <laughs> of power, and maybe love other things like uh, irresponsibility that ah, goes a long yeah. way with stupidity yeah. and uh, doing your job, uh, for example, at the lowest level, for example, you don't care how you do what you do just to get right. paid. So, irresponsibility would be a good one to add here. Yeah. Yeah, it's all about uh, uh, society. So basically, you can see that uh, companies, that private companies, for example, where people are incentivized to work properly, they have results. But some companies that, like government companies, uh, agencies or something, they are kind of not at the highest level, so it's kind of like I associate his quote with something mm. that I um, I dealt with. Yeah, I think we all have to deal with, frankly. <laughs> I wish, I wish, I wish, or maybe maybe it does exist. Maybe you guys can tell me. Now we obviously have IQ tests, and we can test for ignorance, just what you know or you've never been exposed to. Uh, I wish there was a test for greed. I wish there was some way to rank people. <laughs> How greedy are you? Please take this examination. <laughs> Even better, I wish there was one for love of power. <laughs> is there such a test? And I just, I'm ignorant of that test. If there is, somebody please tell me. Because well, love that. if you spend the, another good one. Yeah. If you spend uh, one hour with a person, you can understand him like. Uh, <laughs> what he or she represents. Yeah, I know. I, I'm living in fantasy land, and I'm just kidding, but I wish there was <laughs> such a test that we okay. could test for greed. <laughs> Here, you you want to, I could give, uh, I could start it, I would start a company just so I could test people. All right, you want to work in my company? I have to test you for greed. Sure. <laughs> irresponsibility. Yeah, Here's I want a irresponsibility one million dollar <laughs> salary, please. Uh, yeah, okay. 
Anyway, okay, uh, Heidi, moving on. Unless you have something, Heidi, do you have anything to say about this, or shall we move on? Um, drugs and alcohol uh, destroy the people, but um, if they remove or test the alcohol or drug, it's not enough. Uh, they yeah. need to check the background of the person. Uh huh. Almost yeah. all kind of illness came from their background, surroundings. Yeah. Still wish there was a test for greed. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. Well, I'm going to skip this one. This is just a silly one. Let's let's go on to uh, Heidi. Can you read this one here? The idea of capitalism is not just a success but also the uh, failure that allows success to happen. Hmm. <laughs> that one may take a second to think about. Mm hmm. Hmm. Interesting idea. Hmm. What do you I'm, think of that? I'm not sure, but um, sometimes it happens even though oh, the person very succeeded in a company, but no. Mm, they, uh, sometimes they failed. Then um, I, I know another person's story. He, once he was um, failed his, on his business, and then he became a homeless, but still he, he was thinking about something, so he uh, made his company an online. Uh, no, uh, it's no need to invest some money, so he became a big, uh, big owner. Mm -hmm. a big uh, his company became big, big, a big company. Mhm, mm mhm. Mm he earned a lot of. Isn't there some story about Thomas Edison and the light bulb? Like he failed some ridiculous number of times. Mhm. Mm yeah. Before. Uh, uh, yeah. Every time that the people of uh, got the failure, uh, then uh, they became more uh, the, uh, stronger and stronger. Ah, ah, okay, interesting. Al Alexander, what do you think of this quote? Is capitalism just as much about failure as it is success? Is there is there success without failure in capitalism in that? Inherent in that idea, Alexander. Are you um, so, uh, yes, I'm sorry. I really don't understand. <laughs> Maybe it's too uh, little, too high for me. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. Well, uh, capitalism. Okay. Basically, dog eat dog capitalism. <laughs> Is it? Uh, hmm. Is is we all when we think about capitalism, and obviously we think of things like Apple and I don't know Microsoft and successes, success stories. All right, the light bulb, GE, whatever. Um, uh, Alabek is uh, is is failure part of the formula? To successful capitalism? Uh, Can capitalism be successful? <laughs> That's another question, of course. I think it, it is a quote. We should should look at that quote as only as a quote. So, uh, uh, you know, what I can understand about this quote is that he said that we, we don't... We not only... Uh, should should uh, we shouldn't only uh, you know expect uh, expect only uh, uh, expect only a, 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 a growing thing about our business, not expect only win. We should we should uh, f felt f feel sometimes uh, a failure, which mm -hmm. is, makes us more maybe stronger. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and finally, it uh, can can allow us to the, the success, maybe something like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, 
All right. Interesting. Uh, Nader or, or Matt, any thoughts about this? I'm not sure about the word failure here. Is it the failure of the successful people or is it the failure of other people that Good allow question. successful people to appear? Ah. Because when I hear the word capitalism, I think about the rich people and poor people. Doggy so in dog. Our world, yeah, in a world of, uh, ah. you know, the, the minimum of, uh, rich people, the 2% who are very rich. Hmm. Which? Okay. Yes. All right. Is he saying that capitalism depends? There are winners in capitalism, but that means that there are losers. More losers. That are more successful people yeah. to to show up. Right. Uh huh. Maybe his this quote is just a straight up critique of capitalism itself. Ooh. Okay. Very good. Interesting. Hmm. Uh, Matt, any last thoughts about this one? Uh, that's well, uh, what uh, our classmates said that uh, first, like idea that uh, uh, should be some uh, downside. Can you say downside? Downside. Yeah. Sure. Like uh, some. Um, and goes down. How do you call that? Like, um, not sure. What declining? Uh, you want a yes. verb or? Yes. No. Like uh, su subject. A noun. Oh. Yeah, noun. Sorry. Uh, the uh, decline. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. You so there is some like um, should be like. Uh, a crisis in order to be like a, a, a rising like of the economy so it's ca it cannot ah. uh, only rise and rise and rise so basically uh, when in the United States was like in 2008 oh. or something yeah. uh, like uh, uh, some kind of bank bank mm. crisis because the people didn't pay their loans or something I don't know so uh, that's a part of the capitalism Ah, okay. Looking at a okay, looking at a broader spectrum as a trending idea. Um, interesting. Okay, maybe. All right. Uh, good. Okay, can I ask? Interesting. Yeah. Is his name PJ? Yeah, I guess his name is probably something. I'm totally guessing. Uh, Paul, John, O'Rourke, Peter, James, O'Rourke. I, I don't know, but he goes by the initials PJ. Is it common to have instead of uh, a name like uh, mm -hmm. like two letters? JT, uh, me, J, in the, United, uh, in the United States, I mean. Yeah, I wouldn't exactly call it common. Yeah, I, I get your question. I wouldn't exactly call it common, but it's... It's known, and for some reason, PJ, the the initials PJ, it's first, it's more common. I I don't know, TJ, PJ. Those are, I don't know, with a second initial J, it's more a common thing. I I've never actually okay. thought about that until just this minute, but I have known a I've known another PJ other than this I, I've in my life, and also a TJ, actually two TJs. Now that I think about it, weird, but I don't think I know anybody else with initial that's called by their initials. Weird. I never thought about that. It's interesting. Hmm. Okay. Uh, okay. Moving on, Alexander. Let's look. Take a. Can you read the next quote for me here, please? Uh, not much was really invented during the Renaissance if you don't count modern civilization. <laughs> okay. Uh, this is called sarcasm. <laughs> okay. Question, Alexander. Now, he has a point. Not a whole lot of... There was not a whole lot of new inventions... Electricity, steam engine, not really. There was no 
physical things constructed during the Renaissance, really. Um, compare it to now when we have a new technological marvel every other week. Uh, Alexander, in your opinion, if you think about the Renaissance and what happened with thought and ideas and science and religion and society and politics. Uh, yes, I think uh, it's true because the in the last uh, one, for instance, 100 years was invented uh, more than the previous uh, uh, ten, uh, ten. Uh, yeah. Oh, one, one thousand. One, yeah, uh, oh, I... sorry. The, the least uh, in uh, the last uh, one hundred was invented more than the le uh, the <clears throat> in last uh, one thousand years. Okay, more was invented in the last hundred years than. You need to use than in comparison. Than were invented in the last thousand years. Okay, well, yeah, that's absolutely true. But physical inventions, I think we can all agree on that point. Do you think society, when we talk about civilization, all right, do you think the... Uh, uh, how do I how do I say the movement of society forward, cultural enlightenment of individuals from being just workers on a serfs, basically slaves, that happened during the Renaissance, new ideas about science and religion. Do you think the world now is actually evolving in a in that kind of way? Uh, societal changes, enlightenment of society and culture, like the Renaissance, or not? It's That's a really hard question, I know that. It's very, you can't, we're in the bottle. We can't look in the bottle because we're already in the bottle. So <laughs> I'm asking you to look at something that's impossible to look at. I know that. I'm asking an impossibility. Well, are humans well, evolving more in the Renaissance or more now? Is, is what I'm trying to say. I guess. What is the f f uh, start? Could you just repeat? Uh, I missed. The first. <laughs> sure, it, it's very di <laughs> okay. I could try. Human society changed a lot in the Renaissance. A lot. There, it was. All, the Renaissance is also known as the Enlightenment. People woke up and realized they don't need to be slaves. They're, you know, uh, philosophy was opened up. Religion was changed. People questioned religion. Sciences were born. People first understood that everything doesn't evolve around the earth. The earth revolves around the sun. The sun is just one of many, 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 many suns. These ideas began to began really uh, anyway my, my question is people think we're so great now we're so wonderful oh we are the height of human do you okay let me rephrase my question is this the height of human existence ever are, are people really enlightened now uh, no of course not <laughs> you you because, laugh. Uh, <laughs> uh, yes, it's not true. There's many of think we we have to change in ourselves. Like it was a great uh, quote before about how to test people uh, to stupidity and ignorance. Uh, yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> Apparently, oh, PJ yeah. wouldn't think so. Yeah, okay. Is this... Okay, let me... Uh, whoever wants to handle that question, I'm not going to force it on anyone like I did to poor Alexander, but <laughs> who would argue... I'm sorry, Alexander. Who would argue that this this is the height of enlightenment of human existence? 
<laughs> or who would say that's a crazy thing to say? <laughs> Yeah. I, th I think I think uh, when you are a child you are open to learning. So uh, people now think they are on the top of uh, civilization ladder, and yeah. the uh, like bigotry is on the rise. Everyone thinks that is right. Every nation thinks that uh, their beliefs are the right ones. So people are not very open-minded at the moment. So I think there is like okay. a backward backward movement now. We're devolving. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> hey, any of you guys ever heard of the band Devo? D-E-V-O. We are Devo. No. 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 Uh, 80s. I'm old. Anyway, uh, 80s new wave punk band Devo. Yeah. Anyway, that was their that was their theory. We're devolving. <laughs> We're de-evolutionizing. <laughs> Okay. Anyway, kind of funny. It's interesting to think about. Are, are we really advancing or not? Depends uh, who. Depends who, Oakley, and depends in what, basically. Uh, yeah. Uh -huh. As right. a whole society, maybe we're evolving in some uh, way, but if you particularly speak with uh, each uh, person in part, you would be surprised that People are not so, I don't know, they're not so like, um, mm, how would they say that, not so smart maybe. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> one way to say it. That works yeah. for me. Sure. All right, okay, let's move on to another uh, idea. There's a whole lot to this quote, but I think we can boil it down to a very simple phrase here. But uh, anyway, Alabek, can you read this next one for me, please? Okay, there is a simple rule here, a rule of legislation, a rule of business, a rule of life. Beyond a certain point, complexity is fraud. You can apply that rule to left-wing social programs, but you can also apply that rule to credit de derivatives, hedge funds, all the rest of it. Yeah, credit derivatives. Derivatives, okay. Yeah, we shouldn't use that word. Here and verbally, that's a bad word. Derivatives. <laughs> Why? Why I, I had a joke. I'm being completely oh, okay. sarcastic. So what's that? What's the derivative? Sarcasm. Um, derivatives. Well, that's well, you just mentioned the 2008 financial crisis. That had something to do with it, and you'll you'll know what derivatives are when the next financial crisis hits. <laughs> derivatives. Actually, you watch that Michael Moore movie, right? Yes. Yeah, sure. All right. Well, he talks about it, and they, or maybe maybe it's not in that movie. Maybe it's another Michael Moore piece. I can't remember. I know I'm not sure, but anyway, he he asked very interesting. Some Michael Moore, either a pe one piece he did. He asked bankers to explain derivatives. Uh, he asked CEOs. He asked vice presidents at Lehman Brothers and Goldman Sachs and um, these investment firms to explain derivatives. Not a single one of them could do it. The fact is, if you can explain derivatives, you're some kind of a genius because nobody else can. It is a money-making scheme in which nothing is produced. Basically, you're betting on what money will do. And if you bet correctly, you make more money. But the reality is, this money made up money, money from nothing. Nothing's be produced. We're not making children's toys or spoons and forks or toilet paper. Nothing gets made, but a bunch of rich people get a lot richer if they bet correctly. Very confusing. In other words, exactly what PJ is saying, <laughs> complexity becomes fraud. When people make enough red tape, uh, when they make things complicated enough, I, and that's what I'm saying when I introduced this. I said, I think this whole quote can be boiled down to three words. Complexity is fraud. Alabek, what do you think? Uh, about complexity is fraud? Yeah. Uh... 
it means that we have uh, some uh, boundaries or fraud of our uh, of the set of our I don't know rights or duties, uh, and all the rules are only do to some do uh, uh, some uh, only limitation. Okay, interesting. And um, uh, thanks, Nate Air. Thanks. I couldn't remember it. I, I I knew I saw it, but I couldn't remember it yet. It has an excellent part of that move. Capitalism, a love story. Okay, he's talking about derivatives, and oh my gosh, it's the scariest thing. He's, one of the scariest things I've ever seen. Actually, uh, one of the scariest places I've ever been, and I highly recommend this if you want to really terrify yourself. It's better than a haunted house. It's better than going to the scary abandoned hospital. You'll really scare the heck out of yourself. Please, I urge all of you, go to the New York Stock Exchange. <laughs> Why? Was there? Terrifying. A bunch of people trading back and forth billions and billions of dollars, and they all seem to be entirely insane. They're screaming and hollering and jumping up and down and running back and forth. It's like if you threw um, a thousand chickens into a into a cardboard box. They they seem to be completely insane. <laughs> and when you think about for a second that these are the people that are running our planet, um, you'll suddenly become very terrified. <laughs> oh my gosh! Complexity. Oh, there we go. Complexity. It seems insanely complex. How to? How it does this sort out the economy of the world? Ay, yay, yay, yay. Okay. Um, anybody else have a, anything to say about complexity is fraud? Do you agree with that? Can you just make things so complex that no human being can understand and then in that way Doesn't lie to them, to steal their money? Alexander, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, I want to ask a question. Does it mean sure. that uh, something uh, the deliberate m made complex? Well, <laughs> well, that's a very good question. Is it? <laughs> oh, yes. So I think that... in my country, yes, because of uh, many uh, red tapes and because uh, to get from people who want uh, uh, get something faster to pay money so give a, to give a bribe uh -huh. so, uh, in uh, many cases I think it's true okay yeah <laughs> in many cases I think taxes are fraud oh, yeah think. yeah it makes them so complicated. Yeah. So it is very hard to evade. That's what I was going to mention. Taxes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. taxes. If they are simple, good. people can, can evade them easily. Right. I I, I guess laws and uh, economy and these, uh, these things, people tend to make it very, very complex. So people cannot... Uh, Cannot manipulate easily, and they can manipulate itself. Their service. Yeah, if it's, it becomes so obscure and ridiculous and difficult to understand, then people won't bother. So you can defraud them. I, you know, and I've seen this in like banking, just normal banking. Suddenly, there's these hidden charges, and they have, they say, okay, this is your service fee for. Renumeration of your integral uh, denominator uh, uh, zebra chords. Uh, what? What the heck is that? They're charging me. I can see that, but I don't understand what they're talking about. That insurance. So many areas of life. They've made things have not gotten simpler with the advent of technology, with all the simplification of our lives, if you're dealing with things like insurance or banking or taxes, things are about a thousand times more complicated than they were 20 or 30 years ago. Why? 
Yeah, wow. laws are the same. Before you can def you were able to defend yourself. Now you can. You have to get a lawyer, even if you are innocent and even if you know the circumstances of the case. Law, very good. Complexity is fraud. The laws are so complex that you must hire a specialist to figure it yeah. out. Your, your taxes, you need a specialist. Yeah, and it's it's basically just it doesn't need to be that complex. Is I think the point that PJ is making. They they make it that complex so they can take advantage of people. I don't know. Uh, okay. But on the on the other hand, you have all the tools to to learn like uh, about that thing or to to mm -hmm. see what's going on there. What do you mean you have Google? You could. And Google about uh -huh. uh, everything, uh, every book, lots of books. Yeah. <sighs> Sorry, I just don't have time to read every book. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah. You're kidding. No, you, you have a point. You have a point. You have a point. I, I, yeah. Go ahead, Nader. No, no, no. Thank you. Go ahead. Oh no, no. I was. I wasn't going to say anything, or I forgot what I was yes. going to say. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yes, uh, I read that the the internet made the informational gap uh, very, very. Uh, uh, they it decreased the informational gap, so uh, specialists like doctors or lawyers and so they are they hate the internet because of this because uh, before they were they uh, they were not uh, even uh, predicting uh, predict that you will you can discuss it, but now you can go to the doctor yeah. and you read about it, your symptoms, so you can the, say maybe it is this this. So uh, doctor doctors hate this hate this when you say you maybe can it be it? this. Yes. Can it be this? Can it be this? Do you do What's that, Nader, before you go to the yes. doctor? Do you check yes. it out? So do I. Yes. So do I. Some, Absolutely. Some, some, sometimes you can figure it out before the doctor himself. Yeah. Yes. Why do you hate them? Why do doctors hate, uh, like, um, not ignorant patients? I don't suppose all of them do. I think that's a generalization, but some of them probably take it as questioning their authority. Oh, okay. So basically, you like uh, saying that doctor maybe is uh, is not a good specialist. Yeah. Or no, they need you know. to monopolize information. Yeah, <laughs> that's if they monopolize the information. First of all, just practically, they can charge more. Frankly, that's okay. Going back to complexity is fraud. If the tax laws were simple, we would not need tax accountants. If law was simple, we would not need lawyers. The only reason these people even exist is because it is difficult or time-consuming to get the information they have. Thus, their entire being a lawyer, being a tax accountant, is in itself completely a fraud. You're, you're just totally taking advantage of the idea of making things so complex that you need a specialist, when it really doesn't have to be that way. That's just my opinion. Okay, but on the other hand, when you need like to go from point A to point B, you'd uh, hire um, like a, a driver because maybe you don't want to go in that traffic, you don't want to mess up there on the streets. So mm -hmm. basically, it's kind of the same that uh, um, maybe you are specialized in one particular thing, but in order yeah. to do other things, you need specialists in, in everything. Like that. I mean, I, I, I'm taking things to an extreme. I could say, you know, I used to be a chef, as some of you know. Well, basically, food is making complicated dishes is time-consuming, and you have to learn it. So I'm a specialist. So is my job a fraud? Well, maybe. <laughs> I'm From your perspective, yes. <laughs> right. Oh, I'm a fraud. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> Here I am teaching you English. English, super yeah, complicated. Yeah, you're a fraud. I'm a fraud. Okay, I've talked my, I've painted myself into a corner. That's that's what. <laughs> oh, oh dear. Oops. Error. Error. I've painted myself into a corner. That's what that's called. Um. <laughs> okay. Let's look at this last quote here. Uh, Heidi, can you read this one? Okay, uh, most people thought of the ancient going to work because of the uh, socialization. 
Thank you. Bye-bye. 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 Bye-